Hi you guys. So I'm finally getting ready to put some stuff into the ground. So I need to mark out my uh, big garden here and then plot it on my graph paper. So I've done a couple things. First of all I put some posts in the ground across from each other and this is what I'm using as the beginning of my bed. You know I'm trying to make it pretty uh, rectangular. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it out that way, and then again from the post, not that post, but there's a post down there, to the other end, and then we'll mark it down on the graph paper and figure out uh, how much space I need to plant everything in. And then what I do is I run um, a line, you can see the blue bailing twine down here, and I'll plant every couple feet. I'm a close crop planter. So I overplant in small spaces. I overplant in big spaces. I overplant a lot. Uh, but what I'm, I do is, for this particular thing, is every two feet, and this is for broccoli, I'm going to put in one of my broccoli starts, and then I will rotate this whole line down another two feet and run the line again, and then I'll put in cauliflower uh, two feet and then cabbage or whatever. Uh, way I decide to plant. So I've got that. These are for my cucumbers, trailing cucumbers, uh, when I get those in. And uh, it's always nice to have a little workstation set up for your, for yourself so you can come out and, and, you know, put your stuff down, reference material, look at the temperatures, uh, things need to be in the ground. And speaking of temperatures, let's take a peek and See what the ground temp is today if we don't get blinded. So it's about 52 degrees. It's funny, I've been watching people on Facebook here in, around Portland, Oregon, and uh, lots of people are, have planted their tomatoes, and suddenly their p tomatoes are all dying or their cucumbers are dying, and they're wondering, why is everything dying when it's 70 degrees? It's 70 degrees, why is everything dying? Well, because the air is 70 degrees does not mean the ground is 70 degrees, and so you're shocking your plants too much. So right now I'm only going to plant cold crop, and today that is going to be broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower. Alright, so now we've got all this beautiful broccoli planted in the columns all the way down there, as you can tell. So I have now measured and moved two feet to the north, run my line again, and I've uh, marked where I want to put the cauliflower and cabbage. And you'll notice, like, I have a broccoli here and a broccoli here, so between the two is where I'll plant. And that gives me some more growing area. And I put two plants in each one of these areas. Um, we'll see how much uh, broccoli and cauliflower I have. So in addition to uh, planting that way, what I've done is I marked uh, where this is, this line is, and then put uh, a tag down. And then I brought this down and I'll mark this here and put a tag here. And then when I do you know, another couple feet, which this is marked from last year, it's about two feet. Um, I'll put a tag there, etc., etc., etc. So we can just come out here and look and see uh, what is what. And then again, just keeping in mind, I'm doing this kind of triangular planting. So when we come down to this column here, we'll have the next plants there like that. So there you have it. So when you're planting your garden, keep in mind the shadows that appear throughout the day and how the wind, not the wind, the uh, sun travels. So our sun travels from behind me. It should go behind me, which is uh, west over to east, or uh, east to west, which is on the side. And you would think that this whole area would stay nice and sunny, which is why we put the big garden here. But what happens, unfortunately, are trees grow and bushes grow. So now, when I'm planting my garden for this year, I find that this area over here is very shady. 
and because I've been watching this, you know, these trees grow for a couple of years now, I see that where I am here, I'm going to back up this area here, slowly spin back, up to about here, all of this is going to be shady by this afternoon, so anything I plant in this area really should be something that can take partial shade, which um, I'm going to still need to figure out what that's going to be. Probably some kind of a leafy green. Otherwise, uh, for full sun, I need to go on the ends away from this tree and then on this end. So you should take some time and watch your yard, the area where you're going to have the garden or the areas you're thinking about putting the garden, and try to figure out where the shade is going to be because this is a significant amount of shade for a lot of the sunny day we have. Uh, I'll show you in a few more hours how much further the shade is getting, but for now let's go ahead and take this stick. And I'm just going to, here are the onions and the garlic, but let's just say, here's the edge of the shade. Put the stick right there, right? And we'll come back in a couple hours and see how much more the shade has come back this way so you can see what it is I'm talking about. But otherwise, gosh, it's a gorgeous day. I'm loving planting. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to it. Hey, you guys. So I've got the uh, cabbage and a bulk of the cauliflower planted here. And then what I did is every two feet I went and uh, rediscovered I had all these flags. And this happens to me a lot. Does, does this happen to you a lot? I had a certain number of these flags and I ended up using every one of them and it came out to be the perfect amount. It's really weird. So every two feet is where I'll plant the next uh, horizontal line. And that I have transferred over to my grid paper here. So you can see that first flag is out eight feet from there to here. So it's on this from zero to eight feet. Broccoli, the date, and I have 15 um, areas that I planted. Not 15 plants, I probably have 40 or so. But for every hole I dug, I put the number there. And then the next flag over is 10 feet, and that's this line. And I have eight areas that I plant, planted cabbage and six that I planted the cauliflower. And then I'll go to 12 feet, which should be, again, by that yoga mat, the next area. We'll make a column and we'll continue planting like that and keep going forth until the whole area is planted up. And then I also wanted to show you our shadow. It's been about an hour or so. And so you can see this is the stick that we first put down that was on the edge of the shadow, right? So now we're backing up, and the shadow has come out to just about this area here. So let's put kind of a couple of sticks here, a big stick, so we can track that. And you can see from there up to here, and still we have more time coming. So this area in here is going to fill in the shadow by that tree. I'd like to take that tree down, but my husband likes it. So you can see. That's a reason why my onions and garlics haven't thrived as much there as they have down there. They're significantly bigger. But So we'll wait to see how much more of this area fills in, and somehow I'll mark it on the ground here, and I'll plant in some cold crop into that area. And I encourage you to do the same. So get yourself some old-school graph paper. It makes a nice, little easy way to figure out how you're going to plant things out, or at least keep track of how you're going to do it. So, anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions. We'll talk later. Bye. Alright, you guys, so we're looking at the light situation again. So, I put up some sticks with this time, up and down, so we can see. That's where that first area of wood we put down around, oh, 1230 was. And then here is that second area. So you can see it's coming across the garden, but look at this. Look how far out we are now. Dun, 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 dun. We're out to this spot now where the shade 
is coming across my big garden. And remember earlier, it pretty much looked like this whole area would be wide open in the sun. So we'll watch it another hour. But what's happened then is that the area that at first glance, especially in the morning, would look like total sun, we're realizing that this whole area in here is shaded for mm, a third to half the day of good sun, of strong sun. You know, 1, 12, 30, 1 o'clock, it's all sunny, and then it dapples. So I'm going to need to mark out this kind of whole area here when it reaches this pinnacle, I don't know, around 4.30, and, or I'll wait till it starts to, to drift back. Um, it'll actually go more toward that way because the sun is up here. It will go down between the trees and over on that side. So something to make note of is how your sun goes. And from here to here is just an hour of time. And this is 20 feet. From here to here, maybe 10. From here to here, 20. So there you have it. I'll keep you apprised.